Well, hi there. Plants have a lot going for them. One of the biggest things is that they can make their own sugar from water, light, and air. But they are rigid and rooted into the ground. As a result, they have trouble meeting people. There are no dating apps for trees because they don't get out much. And this makes reproduction a little tricky. Many plants can reproduce asexually or can self-fertilize. So sometimes they don't need to meet people. But there are downsides to reproducing exclusively with yourself. We discussed the crazy life cycle of ferns previously. In fact, most plants reproduce in a way that is somewhat similar to that. So most plants do produce sperm and eggs, but getting them together with the sperm and eggs of other individuals, that can be tricky because again, plants have trouble meeting people. Seedless plants like ferns and mosses generally chuck their gametes, sperm and eggs, into the water like baby Moses and just hope for the best. Goodbye, buddy. Hope you find an egg. And this seems to work pretty well, at least anywhere that gets really wet from time to time. But it's also a big part of the reason that these plants are only found in pretty damp locations. If plants were to move outside of these habitat types, they'd need a different way to get their gametes together. Well, if you've ever parked under a pine tree and come out to find your car covered in yellow powder, you've discovered one of these ways. That yellow stuff all over your car was pollen, tree sperm. That tree just unsuccessfully attempted to mate with your car. Conifers, like your car's would-be suitor, simply throw their sperm into the wind. And that certainly allows the sperm to get places. But what are the odds that it will actually land on an egg? I mean, eggs are much bigger than sperm, but they're still really tiny. Well, the odds go up considerably if you have a sperm collector. And that's exactly what pine cones are. They open up and each of those little sperm collecting wings funnels into a single egg. And this works even in places that are not very wet, as long as it's pretty windy from time to time. But what about places where it doesn't get wet or windy? Well, that's trickier. If only you had something that you could entice animals that do get around to move your sperm from where you have it to the eggs of others of your species. Something that you have in abundance that they need. Like, oh, I don't know, sugar? Oh, that's right! You're a plant! You make your own sugar! And if you happen to produce your sperm and eggs close to some of that sugar, animals might come by for the sugar and accidentally carry off your sperm or deliver some sperm they got elsewhere to your eggs. Of course, this will work only if the animals know that you have such a sugar bribe. What you need is a billboard, something bright and attractive that will draw them in and help them discover the sweet, sweet prize that you have for them. And the better your billboard happens to be, the more you'll probably reproduce. And interestingly enough, when humans start thinking about reproducing, they often cut off your reproductive structures to hand to their potential mates. Kind of an odd tradition. But as a plant, even if you manage to get your eggs fertilized, you have another huge problem. There are many species of plants that produce a seed coat so thick that the developing embryo can only emerge from the seed if the seed has been burned. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense because plants don't get out much, which means that plants generally drop their seeds on the ground beneath their branches. And this is one of the worst places ever to drop your seeds because plants need sunlight to live and there isn't too much of it right below a plant. In fact, if mom is still alive, the babies don't have much of a chance to survive. And thus the only chance that they would have to survive generally would be if mom is dead. Like, oh, I don't know, after a fire? Of course, this would require a seed coat so thick that you would be able to survive the fire that killed your mom. And it would also mean that if there was no fire, you would die trapped within your seed coat. Of course, dying in your mother's shadow isn't much better. If only there were a way for plants to get their seeds elsewhere. Excuse me, Mr. Squirrel. I'm a tree. And every year I work so hard to produce seeds. And every year... I watch as they sprout and begin to grow. They're so beautiful, full of so much promise. And every year, I watch 
helplessly as they wither and die in my shadow. And I notice that you seem to frolic about rootless wherever you fancy. And I was wondering if it wouldn't be too much trouble if you could just move some of my seeds to, to anywhere but here. And you might be able to find just such a squirrel. A squirrel that would rather use its energy to help you reproduce successfully than to reproduce itself. But there probably won't be many squirrels like that in the next generation. That is, unless you could make it worth their while. You'd need another bribe. But what do you have that a squirrel would need? Oh, that's right. Sugar, you're a plant. And if you happen to be a plant that deposits just a little bit of sugar on your seeds, well, that might just entice a little squirrel to move them around. And if your seeds have a seed coat that can survive a fire, then they might just survive a trip through the digestive tract of a squirrel. And then they can be deposited somewhere that isn't in your shadow with fertilizer. Everybody wins! And that's what fruit are, seeds wrapped with sugar. And if you've ever looked at a fruit like an apple, you've probably noticed that there's a stem on one side and a weird little brown thing on the other. Well, the stem is what attached the fruit to the plant. And that little brown thing on the other side, it's a flower. And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.